We have made a ton of progress on our root cellar over the past few days. Let me catch you up. On Thursday last week, we were pouring the footer, mixing concrete in a wheelbarrow feverishly to get that done. We finished that Thursday night and I called the guy who was gonna lay the block and said, hey, I'm done. Can you come out tomorrow? He happened to be free. So Friday morning, he showed up and started laying block. All right, we're back at the root cellar and the guy who's gonna lay block is already here and he already moved a bunch of block over. You having fun? Yeah. All right, good. They worked on it all day Friday, and they worked on it for half a day Saturday, and then they finished the block. Okay, block is laid. Here's our little root cellar space. I think it turned out really good. I think it's a great size, and it's wide enough we can put shelves on either side. It's significantly buried in the hill. I'm really happy with this. What's this? You notice these little notches by the door. What are those for? I'll show you. I want to put one little kind of cool touch into the masonry work. So I'll show you what I'm doing. We are, I'm working on the castle right now. Okay, I love castles. You love castles? Me too. I made the brick arch I actually came back and poured these little concrete triangles here and here to finish off the front and I think it turned out really nice I think this is a nice touch that just adds a whole different feel to what you might consider kind of an ugly block building I actually like block a lot some of y'all have wondered why am I building a root cellar I should be working on the house right well the reason is that the very first step in getting this house mold problem taken care of is putting in a big French drain right here. Thus, we're cutting out, we're lowering the level so we get drainage away from the house, which we did not previously have. And so this much digging was necessary. Now, if I'm gonna get a machine in my yard and dig and pay hundreds of dollars and make a massive mess, I'm, I'm gonna do all the digging I'm ever gonna do. So when we're done, with this renovation, I have grass growing in the yard. Because otherwise, I would if I just did like a minimal cut here, put a retaining wall and a French drain, okay? The fastest thing, and it got into the house. Then, in 18 months, when I wanted to put in a root cellar, or a year or two years, I would have to move. I would have to get heavy machinery in our yard again, our finished grassy yard, tear it completely up again. And I just basically I'm doing all of our digging at once. This whole thing is for drainage, but we're doing the root cellar at the same time. And additionally, while I'm moving all this dirt, I'm going to level this area. So eventually I can put an addition on it so we're not just stuck in a 1,000 square foot house. Basically, that's what all of this earth moving is for. Uh, that's why it's happening now. 
First thing after morning chores, we're just watering the garden, watering the little stuff, uh, new greens, planted from seed, plant starts, and of course, the cabbage and broccoli over here. And the onion down here. I'm gonna fertilize these cherry trees this morning. I fertilized all my apples already. And I'm just giving them an unmeasured dose of fish fertilizer and I'll water it in. Um, that's maybe too much. At minimum, in my view, you should fertilize young fruit trees once a year, earlier, early in the spring, earlier than this even, just to give them a little pop to get them to grow because you're trying to grow frameworks to hold fruit, basically. You just want to grow tree initially. We're continuing to work on this root cellar, and what I'm doing today is pouring cores of concrete block to make these really strong columns that run up and down. We're putting rebar in some of them. I've got rebar in the corner three, uh, and two in the middle, and the corner three in the back, and then just a couple up front. Basically, this will make the wall much, much stronger. I mix this stuff pretty wet so I can just easily scoop it and pour it with a bucket. It's been a couple hours since we, <laughs> since that last shot. And in the meantime, uh, I took the boys up for naps, breeze running, family errands in Asheville. No, that's so beautiful. That's so pretty. I wonder what that is. Beautiful. Maybe it's a combination of quartz and, gar and uh, garnet. We're playing with that one, my nose looking for wool. These guys have been working, working non-stop down here. And <laughs> this is their favorite spot, the dirt pile. They're just digging and mining and breaking rocks and finding cool minerals non-stop while I've been working. I'm going to keep pouring my cores up here. The idea with this root cellar is to capture some of the cool temperatures from underneath the level of the soil. So what I want, in addition to the strength from pouring the cores with concrete of these block, is conduction. I want conduction back here. And the more concrete that's inside of these, the, the more conductive will be of heat. So they'll transfer that heat from the earth through into the interior. Now on the front, this front section right here is going to be exposed. And so actually I don't want conduction. I want this to be as insulated as possible. And block is terrible insulate, has a terrible insulation value. I think it's like R2 or something for a block wall. So I'm actually going to pour this front section with a different material called vermiculite, which will more than double, significantly more than double the insulation value of the front wall. And then these upper sections here that are actually going to be exposed. Bree's in town and hopefully she's going to have time to go to the store and buy this vermiculite. I couldn't find it out here where we live but there's a place in town that has it so I'm hoping she's going to have time to go down there. But she had a flat tower on the side of the interstate earlier so she got delayed 
fortunately everyone was okay it was the back tire the front tires are brand new the back tire was a little older and blew out This is something I've never done before. I thought I'd just try it, and there's a reason I haven't tried it before. Putting four 80-pound bags of concrete in the wheelbarrow with water. Yeah, yeah, it's too much. I'm gonna pick some up and put it back in. It's heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. We load it in, into a dump, the dump truck. I mean, into a, the bucket? Yeah, I'm putting it in the bucket. I'll show you. Can I put it in the bucket? Sure. Okay. I'm going to show you how I fill the bucket up. This is the fastest way. I got it. Buddy. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay, we're wrapping up for the day. Even though the boys are honestly having kind of the time of their lives playing out here, they do get tired and they're tired out. So I'm cleaning all my tools of concrete well enough. And then I'm wetting down this whole structure. I'm trying to keep this wet for at least a week because it significantly increases the strength of concrete and mortar um, and its longevity. And so if I'm gonna you know, get my money's worth out of my concrete. And if you're gonna get your money's worth out of your concrete, you gotta cure it. So if you cure, wet cure concrete for 20 days, it's twice as strong as if you keep it wet for only four days. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Twice as strong. Uh, especially that arch. I want that arch to cure really, really good. <laughs> so it doesn't ever crack. And the foundation is just soaking in water down there until I dig a drain out the door of this thing so that's actually great because that's the most important part to keep these walls from ever cracking or moving what are you doing back, back. oh you're a bird you're a bird and you're pecking me huh just trying to figure out if she was able to get that vermiculite this was kind of a small work day uh, I had the boys, so we just got some done this morning, some done this afternoon. Um, the big push right now is to just wrap up this root cellar so I can just turn my attention from it back to the retaining wall, which is going to run into it, and then my French drain, finishing the grating, getting the whole yard wrapped up. So I'm just completely done out here. Um, I'd like to think I can do that in a week and a half, but... Anyway, that's, I'm just pushing forward on this so I can go hands off on this, be done with this. And the next steps on this after I fill it are actually building a little roof on it. So, I, so it's just done for now. I'm not going to insulate it right now. Um, I'll insulate it later when I'm working on insulating the house. But I just want to get it roof, gravel inside. Actually, probably just the roof on it for now. And then turn my attention back to this wall which is going to run right into it. I'm not going to backfill it until I'm doing all my backfilling on my walls probably. I think I'm going to run a skid steer up around but I need to wait. I need a skid steer for want to get a skid steer for one day and there's five things I want to do with it. So I'm waiting till all of those are lined up. 